The first thing that we need to talk about um, is probably the UCLA Alabama game. Uh, that was about as good of a basketball game as you're going to see in the Sweet 16, I think. And uh, it was, I mean, man, the uh, the shot that Alex Reese hit, the shots that Johnny Juzang hit down the stretch. Yeah. Uh, not Juzang, uh, 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 Jack Jack yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It, what, what, a, what a great game. That, to me, that was probably the best game of the tournament um, to date when you combine the fact that we got overtime and we had uh, the shot making down the stretch and we had um, a buzzer beater involved. Like, I think that was the first. I know it wasn't technically a true buzzer beater, but like, whatever. I'm counting it as a true buzzer beater. So, uh, what, what, a, what a game. Best game of the tournament to date. I enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of fun. Like you just said, like, it's always good when you're watching Alabama play because of the style of play. But to just go out there and watch UCLA go out and just, you know, watch them compete one on one and go shot for shot. And then obviously just absolutely take over and overtime. Like it was, mm-hmm. I enjoyed the game and it was a lot of fun. Man. And I will never ever say anything about Alex Reese shooting threes ever again. That was just like, <laughs> as soon as, as soon as they let it go, I, looked, I was like, yeah, that's really going in. And he held his form, walked through it, knocked the, knocked the shot down. It was beautiful, man. So look, I'll I'll tell man. you this, book, man. When you when you are six ten, when you have the stash that he has, oh, you get a puzzle beater in the NCAA tournament in the Sweet Sixteen to pull through overtime. You hold you hold that follow through as long as you want. That was beautiful, man. You never, you never was... have to bring that thing down. If that was me. Well, he should probably bring it down now because they got their asses kicked in overtime. Yeah, overtime was it was not a great look after that. After that shot went down, like when and everything went downhill from there. So yeah, so um, I want to start with with something that like look, look, you got to give all the credit in the world to UCLA because they made the plays down the stretch. They uh, yep. they caught fire in the first half. They hit some ridiculous step backs uh, that ended up carrying them and, and carrying them to the win. That said, this is I I, I get so frustrated with the refereeing at the collegiate level and this and and i think that the alabama game was the the alabama ucla game was the perfect perfect example of 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 what frustrates me so much in the first 42 seconds of that game herb jones picked up two charge foul uh two fouls on charges two charge calls in the first 42 seconds of the game that were no different than the play that happened at the end of the game when when he tried to draw a charge on tiger campbell on the layup that ended up giving UCLA the lead with what was it, 14 seconds left in the game? Yeah. And I understand why officials don't want to feel like get put in a situation where they feel like they are deciding a game with a call that they make, but their calls, I would argue, decided those games, right? Because yeah, yeah, the, they put themselves in that made, position now. The, the call that you made 42 seconds in. Was not all was not different than the call that you didn't make at the end of the game. The calls that you made 42 seconds into the game took the best player on Alabama off the floor for most of the first half. The call that you didn't make at the end of the game is the one that allowed UCLA to take the lead with 14 seconds left. It's just there has to be a level of consistency. There has to be um you have to if you're gonna make that call 42 seconds in, you gotta make that call at the end of the game, too. And look, I am I'm anti-charges. I, I want to ban the charge. From help, like from help side defenders, I, I hate it how often it gets called because officials are too, especially at the college level, they are too anxious to make that call. It gets called too much. If you're a secondary defender, it should be the kind of thing where you are standing there for like a minute and this dude just runs full speed into you. That's what it needs to be to be a charge in my mind. Otherwise, it's a dangerous play where you're undercutting somebody and you could end up hurting them with people trying to take these charges. Um, but it's just uh, the, the fact that it was called on the first two possessions of the game for Alabama and was not called on that last possession for UCLA. It's just it, it, stuff like that will forever infuriate me. It's little things like that that just gr- drive me crazy. I mean, I I, can, I see your frustration. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, honestly, I would just say that it, it did have an effect in the game early um, when one of your better two-way players on your team – isn't on the floor like they're that's their defensive pulse so him not being there really did hurt them um but i still got to tip my hat off to ucla they came out and they, they didn't fuck around in the first half man. it was <laughs> it was they came out and played really well and then obviously they finished the game off in the stretch i mean alabama came out played an amazing second half outscored them had a, obviously they won the second half as far as points but 
that that overtime, man, like the shots that were made, I was I was highly impressed with UCLA, man. They yeah, McCron McCron's guys deserve uh they deserve that win. They they beat a really good team today. Yeah, and I wanna I wanna make clear that like I don't think that, that that's not why Alabama necessarily lost that game. Uh, yeah. Alabama got eleven for twenty five from the free throw line. Yeah, yeah, you know, they, they, they they beat themselves. They very much yeah. beat themselves. If, if they if they make their free throws, they win that game without a problem, regardless of whether or not the the officials are, are calling it, um, calling making consistent calls throughout the game. But it's just it's never it's never going to sit right with me when like things like that happen. Like you have you can't you can't make that call forty two seconds in twice on the best player on Alabama and then not make that call at the end of the game. When when the game's on the line, it's just things like that just drive me crazy. And I like I don't even care. I don't have any rooting interest on Alabama, right? Like I had the under in that game. I ended up losing because that game went to overtime. But like that doesn't whatever. Like if that charge doesn't call or if that charge doesn't get called, it's less likely that it's going to overtime. So like that would have been beneficial for me. But it, it still it just it, it just drives me crazy when there's not that there's there's no consistency. I don't know. Yeah. But shout out shout out to UCLA because look. Those those kids, the response that they had in overtime was was just absolutely fantastic. And I want to give a shout out, bro. <laughs> I mean, he made he made big that shots. Was, yeah. that. But yeah. But I want to give a shout out to to I mean to it was to me it was Jacquez that that was, yeah. that was terrific. And there were three plays specifically in that in that overtime that really stood out to me. Um, one of them was it was the first play of the the extra period where he drove baseline. Right. Mm -hmm. And he drew the help and he got up in the air and he was able to use his eyes to move uh, Alabama's weak side defenders to the guy dropping out of the corner and throw a no look pass like this. Probably was in the air, two handed uh, uh, strike to David Singleton, who buried his third three of the game. It was the uh, the shot that he hit to put him up seven. Um, And it was the one at the end. uh, I think they were up. They were up four at the time. Right. And um, he was playing with it at the top of the key and he hit a jump over the top of Herb Jones. He yeah. made three huge plays in overtime that allowed them to to kind of take that lead and take that one home. And, and, and I mean, yeah, he's played great. I feel like uh, in the second half of the games in the tournament, I mean, I feel like he's whether it be like obviously he has like not every game has been like uh, uh like you know this high scoring game, but when it gets late into the games, like he has played great in the tournament. Uh, yeah, Jack yeah, Jr. So, I mean, I was one of the guys I looked. At. I think well, he's a sophomore this year. Like I. I saw him early in the year and I was like, yeah, he's pretty, he's pretty talented, but just watching him play in these tournaments and then he steps up in big moments. He has a, he has a, a great habit of stepping up in big moments. So yeah, you know, he makes has got a good one. Makes big, go shots, makes big plays. Like he was, he was really, really good. Um, and it, it's crazy to think about this, man. Like UCLA, there was a pretty strong argument to make that they didn't deserve to get in the field based on what they did during the regular season. That, like they did not have a very good profile at all. They were down by 11 in the first half at, or at halftime against Michigan. <laughs> first four in the first four. And then not only do they come back and win that game, not only do they beat UCLA, not only do they beat the breaks off of Abilene Christian, but they come out here and they, they, they knock off an Alabama team where they like, they were pretty, they were, they were more or less in, in control for all that game. So yeah. like shout out to them, man. That was, that was impressive. That was really, no, it was impressive. Shout out really, to Todd. Really, Col- Shout out to Todd Co- Cobbler. He said Bama just missed another free throw. He said, <laughs> he said, I don't know. He's funny. That's, yeah, funny. that's gonna. That's gonna hurt. <laughs> so the the downside of that is, um, like it's awesome for UCLA, but how long do you think uh, Herb Jones is gonna be thinking about those three free throws he missed down the stretch? Gee, I mean, a I, long I, time. I guarantee it'll be at least every night this week. So like it's, it's that was tough, man. After he made the uh, when he made the second one, like the first set that he had, he missed the first one, made the second one. I was like, all right, well that's tough, but I mean I doubt it'll happen again. Like he got he he made one, you know, like you made your last one. Usually as a player, you make your last one. I mean you, you end on a good note. And then he went back there and he, he coughed up coughed them both up. I was like, damn, like that's to win the game. Hmm. Hmm. That's. I, that's tough. It's tough. I mean, it's a tough scenario, especially at the free throw line when, you know, he had just had that fall. So I know, like, what was it? The lower, like, I don't know if it was his knee or groin or whatever it was. He was limping around. 
And the second free throw, he used all his arms, no legs, because the first one he was like kind of he overshot it a little bit. I'm thinking, all right, maybe he got back to normal. Not the case. It, I felt bad for him, man. That's, that's a tough yeah. way to uh, it's tough rough. way to, to lose, man.